Hey everyone, it's Gus from Pi My Life Up, and today I'm taking a look at how to get x86 apps running on the Pi. Now, before I get started, I do need to mention in order to do this tutorial, you will need to purchase a license key for an application called Exagear. Now, for some, a $15 to $30 price tag might be a bit too high, but it does open the opportunity to install a lot more apps. The license key for this tutorial was provided to me by Eltex for free. Now Exagear isn't just limited to the Raspberry Pi, you will find that it will also work on the Banana Pi, Odroid, Cubiboard, Nvidia Jetson and more. This tutorial takes you through the process of installing it for the Pi, so you may find that things will vary if you install it on a different device. It's important to note that this can't run Windows apps without installing Wine. By default it's able to run x86 Linux applications. Now Exagear isn't perfect, you may find some apps that won't run or some will run so slow to the point that it's unusable. Now this is mainly due to the limited resources of the Pi and the extra weight of a guest OS. It would be great to see a list of apps and their compatibility and performance on the guest OS that LTEX provides. That way you can quickly find out if an app's going to work or not. It's also important to note that it doesn't support applications that require kernel modules and provides no hardware support for the x86 apps. Before we get started, I should mention that you need to have Rasmin installed. I also recommend using a large SD card. While 8GB is enough, you may find yourself running out of room really fast. To begin, first open the terminal on the Raspberry Pi. Alternatively, you can SSH in. Download the Exagear desktop package by entering the following command. Depending on which type of Pi you're using, you may need to change this. This is for the Pi 3 wget http semicolon slash slash downloads.ltex.com slash exagear dash desktop dash v dash one dash five forward slash exagear dash desktop dash rpi three dot tar dot gz. Once it's downloaded, extract the archive by entering the following command tar dash xv zpf exagear dash desktop dash rpi3 dot tar dot gz Next make sure the license key is in the same directory as the extracted archive. The key file should look something like px dash 000000 dot key for example. My key is located on the desktop so I will move that into the home directory which contains the install script. So mv tilde slash desktop slash the key name and then tilde slash. Once the license key is in the same directory, make sure the install script is executable by running chmod plus x dot slash install dash exagear.sh. To install exagear, simply run the script sudo dot forward slash install dash exagear.sh. To now launch Exagear, simply run the following line. Exagear. Now you're running in x86. Yes, it's that easy. Now you can use the terminal as if you were running at an x86 machine. To exit from Exagear, simply enter exit. The script by default installs the image that best suits your operating system. So for Raspbian, it installed a Debian x86 version. However, you might want the Ubuntu image as some applications such as Spotify is only able to run on the Ubuntu OS. To force the installation of the guest 86 Ubuntu, simply run the following line. sudo dot slash install dash exagear dot sh ubuntu dash 1404. To check that you are in the x86 environment, simply run the following line. Arc. It should return i686. If so, you're now ready to start installing and using x86 apps. Before you get started, update the guest OS by running the following commands. sudo at get update and sudo at get upgrade. 
I will just quickly go through a couple of examples of how to run some of the Raspberry Pi x86 apps. These are just a couple of examples I will look at addressing some more popular applications in a couple of future tutorials. The first app is Sublime, that unfortunately doesn't offer an ARM version of the software, so you will need to run it through the guest OS. Firstly, make sure you're running under the x86 guest system by using the arc command. It should return i686. Make sure wget is installed under the guest OS so that we can download Sublime. We will also need the libgtk 2.0 library to be able to use Sublime. Enter the following line to download the packages, sudo apt get install wget libgtk 2.0 Oh. Next we need to download the dev package for Sublime by running the following command wget https slash slash download dot sublime text dot com slash sublime dash text underscore build dash three one two six underscore i three eight six dot deb once that's downloaded, run the following lines to install Sublime to the Raspberry Pi. dpkg-i sublime-text underscore build dash 3126 underscore i386 dot deb and then sudo apt get install dash f. Now you can easily run and use Sublime. You'll find it located under the programming submenu. Simply click on it and it will load straight into the program. Telegram is a messaging application that provides fast and reliable messaging, has a focus on speed, security and of course privacy. Again, you may want to double check that wget is installed so that you can download Telegram. You will also need to download two other packages to make sure that it will launch correctly. So sudo apt-get install wget xz-utils-gconf2. Now download the latest version of Telegram by entering the following line. wget https forward slash forward slash telegram dot org slash dl slash desktop slash linux32. Now extract the tar archive by entering the following command tar-xvpf linux32. Now open the program by simply running the following line telegram slash telegram. You can now use telegram hopefully without any issues. A few errors may pop into the terminal but these can be safely ignored. Once you're done simply exit. Now if you want to run some Windows applications on the Raspberry Pi, then you'll need to install Wine. Installing Wine is straightforward, simply run the following command when you're running under the guest 86 system, sudo apt get install wine. To configure Wine, simply run the following command, wine cfg. In here you can configure Wine, but you shouldn't actually need to do anything. Make sure you do run this once, otherwise you won't be able to see the C drive on your Pi. You can also open the control panel for Wine by entering the following command, Wine Control. Now you can install Wine applications to the Pi. For the full list of applications tested with Wine, check out the Wine HQ database. Of course, you'll need to remember that the Pi doesn't have the power of a typical PC or laptop, so many applications may not run at all, or if they do, they will run extremely slow. Now with Wine installed, I'm going to quickly show an example of an application you can run on the Pi. In this example, I'm going to install the text editor Notepad++. Firstly, download Notepad++ to the Pi by running the following command. wget https slash slash notepad dash plus dash plus dot org slash repository slash seven dot x slash seven dot one slash mpp dot seven dot one dot installer dot exe. Once that's downloaded, move installer to the C drive for Wine. MV NPP.7.1 .installer.exe slash home slash pi slash dot wine slash drive underscore C. 
Now run Wine with the location of the Notepad++ installer. Keep in mind, Wine sees the directories as a typical Windows layout, so drive underscore C is a C semicolon. So Wine single quote C semicolon backslash backslash npp dot seven dot one dot installer dot exe single quote. Now follow the prompts to install Notepad++. At the end you can tick the box for it to open Notepad++ and it should do it without any problems. Alternatively you can run the following line. Wine single quote C semicolon backslash backslash program space files backslash backslash notepad plus plus backslash backslash notepad plus plus dot exe single quote. Now you can follow the same process to basically install any kind of Windows application to the Pi. However, it's important to know that not every app will run or run very well. It's best to check the Wine database that I mentioned before to see how a certain app might perform running under Wine. There are a wide range of applications that you're able to install using Exagear. For now, I hope that Exagear has installed correctly for you, and if you do come across any problems, then be sure to check out the Exagear forums for support. If you have any feedback, tips, or anything else you'd like to say, be sure to leave a comment below or over at PyMyLifeUp.com. Until next time, have a good one. Looking for more Pi projects to do? Check out these 21 awesome Pi projects that anyone can do. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date with the latest and greatest projects, guides and much more.